In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Yes, not content to lose the popular vote only twice in his life, failed presidential candidate and all around pathetic sad sack Donald Trump has announced he wants to lose again and drag down Republicans with him. So uh, I'm kind of here for it. We're gonna be covering all of the fallout from his announcement. Uh, what we're not gonna be doing though is playing much of what he had to say for a number of different reasons. Um, first of all, it was very repetitive. It was mostly his rallies condensed slightly, shifted a little bit. Um, but also, I, I don't know, there's a good chance that many of you saw the like literal live coverage last night. Y you know what he had to say. We can summarize a lot of it, by the way, with this short little clip. Thank you. And I'm a victim, I will tell you. I'm a victim, think of it. Uh I think that'll pretty much cover it for the announcement and most of his campaign. Look, he did say some specific things about policy. Uh, he once again reiterated that he wants the government to put to death people who deal drugs, that's fun. Um, he says he wants new voter identification standards. He doesn't want you to be able to vote except on election day. And he only wants paper ballots, I'm fine with the paper ballot stuff. But the idea that he, they don't want early voting, they don't want mail-in voting, they don't want voting. Can we be clear about that? Republicans accurately have divined that they cannot win when many people vote. And so they're gonna try to limit it. He also wants to um, put a limit on congressional terms, which is fine. Some people support that. Uh, no Republican is going to support that if he becomes president. So that's a non-starter. And he wants, he says he wants to ban insider trading inside of Congress, pretending that he cares about corruption. Again, not a single Republican congressperson will support that. So all of that is meaningless. Much of this is meaningless, JR. I don't know, what do you think? Uh, it's, as you said, it was expected, it's what people were looking for. Um, but the end, as he went through, I, I did watch and listen to the whole thing. Um, and you said cool. many people probably did, no they didn't. Because <laughs> if I didn't have to, I wouldn't have either. There was there was like fascinating things on TV. There was a few commercials and everything. I was like, this is fabulous. Mr. Clean has a new wipes. Oh, it's awesome. That was so much more interesting <laughs> than this entire thing. He went through and droned through all of those normal things and talking about even uh, we got men and women's sports and then we got to worry about our inflation and then we're, but none of it had anything to do with how he's going to change or fix this stuff. Just constant the same old repetitive complaints and complaints and complaints and then moving slowly and then asides and then getting distracted and then coming back to it and then saying Joe Biden senile and then saying he can't do this. Oh my God, he can't do that and I'm gonna bring back glory and then rainbows and butterflies. Everyone had tons of money when I was president. People were floating on clouds and now look at <laughs> death and destruction. Our foreign enemies were like, oh my God, America is back and oh my God, they're scary. They're gonna murder us. Let's just concede now and give them everything that we have. All that was said, I'm not exaggerating. But that somehow is part of a presidential announcement from someone like this. It is worst moment, which Chris Sununu said, uh, sitting on one of these biggest losses and talking about how it's not his fault. All this was included in about an hour and 10 minutes of him just announcing that he's running for president. I remember I was waiting for the announcement. It took me like 30 minutes. I was like, okay, okay, he's finally getting there. And then he didn't, did another 10 minutes. Then he finally got there. And I was like, okay, he's gonna leave in like five minutes. This is the end. No, no, another like 25, 30 minutes of. Rambling, yeah. Why? Why? I don't, I, I don't, I don't get a lot <laughs> of it. I feel like there were opportunities to, if he was going to accomplish anything in this, it's less about just announcing that he's running. It's been pretty clear for a few months, at least, that he's going to do that. Um, what he needs to do, from his point of view, is either lay out some new strategy that he's going to run on, which we don't have. It's a mishmash of 2016 and 2020 era Trump. And neither of those campaigns resulted in a majority of the electorate choosing him. So great strategy, buddy. Um, but what he needed to do was to I don't know, attack DeSantis or Abbott or Youngkin or something like that. And he didn't even really do that, which at least would have been entertaining. But I kind of, 
I kind of suspected that, which is why, look, respect to you for watching a whole speech. I went and saw Black Panther. I was living my life. I'm not <laughs> saying that the announcement doesn't matter or that him running for president doesn't matter. It does matter. There are very high stakes in this, and we're going to be covering it over the next two years between now and the election. I am unfortunately gonna have to talk about him for 372 hours. I don't know. It's gonna be a lot. But each individual's speech isn't necessarily important. He's not that interesting or dynamic of a guy. I know that his supporters think he is, but he is highly repetitive. And even they, we were talking about this in our production meet this morning. They will like they'll hear he's coming to do a rally in their town. Okay. He's finally gonna be here. I get to see him, put on my hat, and it's MAGA. Then they go and they line up and they have to wait for hours. They go in there and then a lot of them leave early. Like, yeah. cause it's not that entertaining. And in fact, why don't we turn to that now? Because whether I found it interesting or not is largely irrelevant to the MAGA movement. The issue is that many of them didn't find it interesting. Let's jump in this next video. Remember I sent to Angela, remember Angela? Do you remember Angela? Nobody's remembering her now. Angela right, Merkel, just joining us, President Trump in Mar-a-Lago announcing his 2024 presidential run. That is Sean Hannity not being able to bear hearing any more of Donald Trump's presidential announcement speech. That wasn't me cutting from Trump, that was Sean Hannity cutting from Trump. And for once, I get it, Sean. What was that Angela Merkel stuff? No, nobody remembers Angela Merkel. No one in the MAGA movement is tuning in to hear how people aren't giving enough credit to Angela Merkel or Whatever it is that you're talking about there. And they did not return to his speech for some time, by the way. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.